Chemistry lecture number 89, acids and bases. An acid solution is a water-based solution that has an excess amount of H+, or hydrogen ion. Acid solutions have a sour taste. Lemon juice is an example of an acid solution. A basic solution is a water-based solution that has an excess amount of hydroxide. Basic solutions have a bitter taste and feel slippery. Soap solutions are basic solutions. If you've ever had the misfortune of tasting soapy water, then you know it tastes bitter. And when mixed with water, soap is a slippery substance. A basic solution can be made if a substance dissociates and forms hydroxide when placed in water. For example, solid sodium hydroxide will dissolve and form Na plus and OH negative when placed in water. So if you take sodium hydroxide in solid form, put it in water, it'll break apart into a sodium ion and hydroxide ion. And then the presence of these hydroxide ions is what makes a solution basic. An acid solution can be made if a substance ionizes and forms hydrogen ion when placed in water. For example, when gaseous uh, HCl molecules are bubbled through water, they will form H plus and Cl negative. So uh, HCl is a molecule that exists in gaseous form. When you bubble it through water, uh, it will produce H plus and Cl negative. And the presence of the H plus is what makes uh, the water an acidic solution. An HCl molecule produces a single hydrogen ion when placed in water. See, when you look at this, one hydrogen ion, all right, and then you put it in water. So, an HCl molecule produces a single hydrogen ion when placed in water. If a molecule produces a single hydrogen ion, it is a monoprotic acid. Some molecules can produce more than one hydrogen ion. And these are polyprotic acids. Let me show you some polyprotic acids. For example, H2SO4 can ionize to produce two hydrogen ions, which makes it a diprotic acid. So H2SO4 ionizes in two steps. So if you put H2SO4 in water, first thing that happens is that one hydrogen will fall off and form a single hydrogen ion and uh, HSO4 negative. And then the HSO4 negative, that dissociates and forms H plus and SO4 uh, two negative. So two hydrogen ions can be produced when you put uh, H2SO4 into water, but uh, the hydrogen ions fall off one at a time. H3PO4 can produce three hydrogen ions, making it a triprotic acid. So it produces three hydrogen ions in three steps. So the first step is H3PO4 is put in water, and then one hydrogen ion falls apart, leaving behind H2PO4 negative, and then this dissociates and drops off another H+, plus, leaving behind HPO4 uh, negative two, and then this dissociates into H plus and PO4 negative three. So you end up with three hydrogen ions being produced in three steps. It's a polyprotic acid. Okay. Substances do not necessarily have to contain hydrogen or hydroxide to produce H plus or OH negative. Um, oxides of non-metallic elements can produce an acid in an aqueous solution. For example, if sulfur trioxide gas is bubbled through water, it produces H2SO4, which ionizes to produce H+. All right, so oxides of non-metallic elements. Remember, on the periodic chart, the metals are here in pink, the non-metals are here in blue. So oxides of a non-metallic element, that would be things with sulfur with oxygen attached, phosphorus with oxygen attached carbon with oxygen attached. So those are what we mean by oxides of non-metallic elements. So we're going to look at sulfur, which is bonded to oxygen. So here we are. Sulfur, a non-metallic element, bonded to oxygen, so it's a non-metallic oxide. And if you bubble this gas through water, it forms H2SO4. And as we saw previously, H2SO4 then dissociates to form H plus in this first step and then the HSO4 negative, then dissociates, it forms H plus and SO4 two negative. All right. So that's how a non-metallic oxide produces an acid when you place it in water. 
Oxides of metallic elements usually form basic solutions when placed in water. For example, Na2O will produce NaOH, which then ionizes to form hydroxide. So metallic oxides of metallic elements. So that means these elements combined with oxygen, magnesium combined with oxygen, rubidium combined with oxygen, and in the example I'm showing you, sodium combined with oxygen. All right, so a metal sodium combined with oxide, a metal oxide, reacting with water produces a basic substance. All right, so uh, the NaOH then dissociates to produce OH negative and the presence of the OH negative in water uh, makes it a basic solution. So oxides of nonmetals and metals that can be turned into acids or bases by placing them in water are called anhydrides. Soluble ionic compounds can react with water to form acidic or basic solutions. And this process is called salt hydrolysis. So for example, if uh, Na2CO3 is dissolved in water, it will produce a basic solution. Uh, and notice that uh, you don't see any OH in here, and yet when you put it in water, uh, it creates hydroxide or OH. All right, and we'll show you how. So it first dissociates to form sodium and carbonate ions. All right, so what happens is <clears throat> you take this, you put it in water, it dissociates into sodium and carbonate. And then the carbonate ion will then react with water to form hydroxide. So this, when it reacts with water, produces hydroxide. And what's happening is that basically the carbonate is stealing uh, hydrogen off of each water. So you have a water molecule. Well, you have two water molecules, actually. And then what happens is uh, the carbonate, let's see, I guess we can put it down here. It'll steal a hydrogen and then steal another hydrogen and that'll form H2CO3 and it leaves behind two hydroxides. Okay, so that's how sodium carbonate, when placed in water, produces hydroxides. An acidic solution can also be made by adding NH4Cl to water, um, and this is called ammonium chloride. Uh, ammonium chloride first dissociates into ammonium and chloride ions. So if you take solid ammonium chloride and put it in water, it dissociates into these two things, and then what happens is the NH4, that will donate a, uh, an, H, an H plus. An H plus will separate off of uh, the uh, NH4 and leave behind NH plus. And the presence of the H plus makes it an acidic substance. Actually, you'll never find H plus floating around by itself in an aqueous solution. Uh, it always attaches itself to a water molecule. So. Anytime H plus pops up in the water, it immediately attaches itself to a water molecule to form H3O plus. And H3O plus is called a, <coughs> excuse me, called a hydronium ion. So when you see H plus, it's shorthand for H3O plus. So what you need to memorize is that the word hydrogen ion means H plus. And since most chemistry problems we're going to see occurs in a water solution, the H plus will attach itself to a water and turn into H3O plus and we call that hydronium ion. So a lot of times if uh, you see the word hydrogen ion, they really mean hydronium ion. Okay, so this occurs for um, water solutions where there's H plus floating around. And you just have to memorize that these all mean the same things for uh, aqueous acid solutions. Some older chemistry books just use this. The newer ones tend to use this more often. So another way to write the reaction NH4 of uh, another way to write the reaction of uh, ammonium with water would be NH4 plus H2O creates NH3 plus H3O. So the NH4 donates NH plus to H3O to form H3O plus. So this is the equivalent of whoops.
And these mean the same thing as long as both of these occur in a water solution. All right. So, for a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 89, acids and bases.